In this lesson, we'll discuss how to predict products for synthesis, decomposition, and combustion reactions. First, we'll start with synthesis. This is where we get one product formed from two or more reactants. We're just gonna work on synthesis that forms binary ionic compounds. So we'll take a metal and a non-metal, combine them together to make a binary ionic compound. There are other kinds of synthesis reactions, but this is what we're going to focus on. So let's start with the first one, the reaction between sodium metal and chlorine gas. We've got a metal, non-metal combination. We'll use our periodic tables to look up the charge of each ion and then write the ionic compound chemical formula. Sodium is a plus one and chlorine is a minus one. So that makes NaCl as our product. Ionic compounds typically are solids. So I'll do a little S there. And then we wanna balance the chemical equation. You can see on the reactant side, we have two chlorines. So we're gonna put a two out in front here as our coefficient. That then gives us two sodiums. So a coefficient of two in front of the sodium on the reactant side. The next reaction is magnesium metal and fluorine gas. So again, another metal, non-metal combination. We're gonna write a chemical formula for the ionic compound. Magnesium has a plus two charge and fluorine has a negative one charge. So MgF2 is our chemical formula. Again, ionic compounds are typically solids. So we'll do a little S there. And once again, we wanna balance, but this equation is already balanced. We have one magnesium on each side and two fluorines on each side of the chemical equation. Pause here for a moment and see if you can complete the next two. Okay, we've got uh, sodium and oxygen. Sodium, once again, is a plus one, and oxygen is a minus two. And so we get Na2O uh, as our product. Again, let's label that as a solid. And then we just need to take a look at the balancing. We've got uh, two oxygens on the reactant side, so two oxygens on the product side here with a coefficient of two. And then that is two times two, that's four sodiums and we'll put a coefficient of four on the reactant side. Uh, magnesium, uh, again, is a plus two, and oxygen is a minus two. And remember, ionic compounds, the formula should be empirical, so we should do MgO instead of Mg2O2. And then we just have to check our balancing. So a two here and two here for our coefficients. Okay, so what about transition metals? Uh, transition metals usually have more than one possible charge, except for zinc and cadmium and silver uh, that we talked about uh, in a previous unit. Uh, those have just one permanent charge. Uh, tin and lead, if you remember from that unit as well, we, they also have more than one possible charge. And so basically more than one compound could be formed uh, from most transition metals and tin and lead. So here's uh, iron combining with oxygen. Iron is a transition metal. It does have more than one possible charge. Uh, most common charges for iron are a plus two and a plus three. And if they're combined with oxygen, which is a negative two, we get two different chemical formulas for products. So FeO and Fe2O3. And then you just have to balance those equations. We can also talk about synthesis reactions that form binary covalent compounds or molecules. 
but we are not going to predict those products. We have two examples shown here. The products are a little bit harder to predict when you put together two nonmetals that don't have charges. So we're just gonna stick with predicting products for binary ionic compounds for synthesis reactions. So now let's move on to predicting products for decomposition reactions. This is essentially the opposite of a synthesis reaction. We have only one reactant and it's gonna be broken down into two or more products. We're gonna focus on just breaking binary compounds into their elements. So most of the time when we have a decomposition reaction, it is gonna require energy. And so that's why you see the little triangles up above the arrow. That means the reaction is heated. But we're just gonna take these compounds and break them into their elements. There are other kinds of decomposition reactions, but these are the ones that we're gonna focus on. So we have a mercury oxide compound. We're gonna break it into the elements, mercury and oxygen. Now remember, oxygen is diatomic. So we're gonna write that as O2. Uh, oxygen typically is a gas. And then mercury is actually a liquid. If you look at your periodic table, um, the elements that are blue on the periodic table are liquids. The elements that are black are solids and the elements that are red are gases. And then we just need to balance the equation. Next up, we have calcium chloride. We're gonna break that into calcium and chlorine. Now chlorine is another diatomic element, so that's gonna be a Cl2. Chlorine typically is a gas. It is red on your periodic table. And then calcium uh, is a metal, and metals typically are solids. So we're gonna do a little S there. This equation is already balanced. And for the final one, uh, we've got ammonia. And we're gonna break that into nitrogen, which is also diatomic, and hydrogen, which is diatomic as well. Both are red on the periodic table. They are gases. And then you just need to balance. So for decomposition, we're just taking compounds and breaking them into their elements, into atoms or diatomic molecules of the elements, no charges. And finally, we have combustion reactions. Combustion reactions are very specific in terms of what has to be involved and what is produced. We're always gonna start with something called a hydrocarbon, so something made of carbon and hydrogen. There could be some other elements in there as well, like oxygen or nitrogen or sulfur, but the hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen and always produces water and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is typically a gas and water, uh, usually that would be water vapor. So we'll label that as a gas. Uh, the reaction is always exothermic for combustion. So if you want to, you can say plus heat. Heat is given off in a combustion reaction. So then you just need to balance. I wanna talk about balancing this one because it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, so if we uh, start with the carbon or the hydrogen, remember do the oxygen last because it's in almost every substance in the equation. Uh, I'm gonna do two carbons and six hydrogens. You can see now that I've got seven oxygens. Uh, two does not go into seven evenly, right? Because we've got this two here on the oxygen. So you have two options. You can use fractions, that is acceptable. Not decimals, fractions. So you could do seven halves, uh, and then uh, that will give you seven oxygens. Okay, that's one option. Uh, we don't like fractions a lot, right? So the other option uh, is to um, double all the coefficients. So you have all whole numbers. So we do a two here, 
uh, we can do a six here and a four here. And then the seven halves, when we double it, just becomes a seven. And then you have all whole numbers. So now please move on to the problem set. This is a mixture of synthesis, decomposition, and combustion reactions. I would recommend trying to identify which type you're looking at first before predicting the products, and don't forget to balance the chemical equations.